And the skipper, Gabe Kapler, joins us now on Giants pregame live from Coors Field. Uh, Gabe, we appreciate you taking time to catch up with us. Uh, your club has shown a lot of fight early on this season and surprisingly some power at the plate, too. You guys had three home runs again last night, 12 on the season, uh, ranked sixth in the National League. Did you expect to have this kind of offense uh, coming into the season? Uh, Kelly, I think we had we had the engines, so we knew that there was some talent in there. And look, I mean, it's it's early on. We're we're eleven games in, so uh, try to be measured both ways. When we're seeing a guy like you know Trump hit a couple of homers and they hit the big home run off the lefty yesterday, and yeah, it's off to the start, but he's off too. Solano is is hot as a firecracker. Those are really positive signs, um, and we always keep in mind that. It's, it's a, a pretty small sample size. The same can be true on the flip side, right? When you're talking about guys like Sandoval and Pence with long track records of success, and they haven't gotten off to the starts that, that they're accustomed to. So I just want to be measured on both sides. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about the resilient nature of our team so far, ability to bounce back from a tough loss, and, and, and probably just as critically, uh, the ability to bounce back from a tough couple of innings and, and, and stay in games and fight. Hey, Gabe, you, you mentioned you mentioned Yes, who obviously is is one of the hotter players in the National League right now, one of the better players in, in the National League early on here. Um, I, I know you knew what he was capable of as a hitter, but I'm, I'm wondering behind the scenes, what have you learned about Mike in the last over two camps in the last week and a half that maybe you didn't realize when you took the job? Well, I, I didn't. I wasn't privy to the leadership skills. I heard heard stories, but he's completely unafraid in the clubhouse. Um, not intimidated to have tougher conversations with coaches. You can stick him in the one spot and he can be absolutely rolling and then you can drop him a couple spots to the three bowl and he doesn't he doesn't really even blink an eye. Um, ask him if you ask, ask him if you can play center or right, right or center. Like there's no there's no ego there. He just wants what's best for the team. It's really refreshing to have right now you know, like our player that's standing out the most also embody those kind of character traits uh, because I think it just sets a good example that star players can also be selfless. He's done a really nice job of that. I think you played four seasons in Boston. Did you ever actually meet his grandfather or get a real understanding of what he means to that region? Uh, yes, met him. I wish I could say that I've had like more intimate, longer conversations with him. I haven't. Did have an opportunity to meet him and definitely know what he means to the community in Boston and how powerful the name Yastrzemski is. Yeah, uh, pretty cool to meet Kari Um, Let's talk also about your catchers because coming into this, obviously you thought you'd have Buster Posey. You lose not only his leadership and his bat and his catching ability, but then you have to kind of figure out how to make things, you know, go without him. And uh, you've had some, some pop in those guys' bats. Obviously, Chadwick Trump's really showing the power that you guys talked about in the spring. Um, I guess, how big has that been, these guys stepping up? Yeah, it's been huge for us because like, there's legitimately no way to replace Buster Posey's bat, his glove, um, his leadership skills, the character, all of those things. Um, so what you're hoping for is that that loss isn't as dramatic. And I think what Heinemann and what Trompy have done so far has just made that loss sting a little bit less. Um, and, and in particular, I think Heinemann's knack for getting on base, Trump's early stage power of production, and both of their ability to kind of navigate the opposition's lineup and, and work with our pitching staff has been um, you know, openly a pleasant surprise. Now, one thing we have also seen this season, obviously, has been some issues with the defense and a lot of errors right now. You have the second most in all of baseball. Um, I know this spring you came in talking about how defense, you thought it really could be a strength. And it's something you guys have worked a lot on. So what do you think is going yeah. on right now? Yeah, and I, I think the first thing to do is just, like, call out that there's been some, there's been some physical errors, right? Um, throws that are offline, and, and not all of them have been resulted mm -hmm. in it haven't been as accurate with our throws as we need to be. We haven't played catch in um, some pretty important situations. We have, we've watched a couple of rundowns. Um, we have not always been in the perfect position. And so we just have to kind of call that out 
um, acknowledge that it's real and, and get to work on, on fixing it, which we're actively doing. Um, there's the physical work that's being done, but there's also uh, the positioning review that's that's happening on a regular basis. And the one thing that, that, I, that I do want to point out is I have a lot of respect for and um, belief in Kai's process to improve defenders' range, their hands, their feet, and also improve the process so that we're, we're positioning effectively. Um, it's a little too early to tell um, how, how good we've been on that front. We've actually gotten some positive returns, um, you know, just in small sample size, which again, like we just need to be taking with a, a grain of salt, but we've recorded some outs that we wouldn't have otherwise recorded. And on the flip side, I think it's also important to acknowledge it also squeaked through some holes. So um, I guess that's a kind of a long-winded and, and less concise way of saying that we have some improvements to make, some adjustments to make, but believe in the process. I know, it, like you said, it's really early in the season. Um, and, and you did just tell us what the shifts, especially you, you talk to the starting pitchers, you talk to the pitching staff about what they're comfortable with. One thing that did stick out to me, though, and again, small sample, but you guys are, are shifting about 15% more than you did last year. And especially against left-handed batters, I, I think today, as of today, you, you lead the league in shifts against lefties. Is that a matter of who you faced, or, or is that kind of um, a whole new staff, a whole new idea of what you want to do defensively? It's a combination of both, of who we face. And we face some pretty left-handed, um, heavy lineups in Texas and L.A. And now here in Colorado, though, I think the, the Padres are probably the exception to that. Um, but I also think it's it's a little bit of, of a, an aggressive nature that we have. But again, we're, and I can't stress this enough, we're going to strike a balance between being aggressive, um, you know, taking some risks on defense and creating comfort for the pitchers. And so to your point, Alice, we've like, we've, we've definitely had these conversations. We put a strong emphasis and priority on continuing to have the conversations better so that we can we can smoke out the truest opinions of, of the pitchers. We don't think there's enough of an advantage by playing an aggressive style of shift defense um, that it, it would discount the way a pitcher was going to feel about it. So pitcher's on the mound, he looks over his shoulder, he doesn't feel comfortable with the defensive positioning, he does it delivers the pitch with less conviction. We've essentially blown up every – strategic advantage that, that we tried to create. So we won't do one without the other and, and we're not we're not gonna go rogue. It's just not it's not our style. One thing you've done early on or, or I, I guess the last three, four days, you, you've started your sessions with reporters by talking about the Sacramento camp and, and giving us updates on guys who we saw for a few weeks now uh, are, are kind of up there and, and out of view. Um, you know, the question comes, all, all the fans want to know about your top guys, about Joey yeah, Bart or Luciano. I'm wondering with Bart in particular, nothing about him being called up, but I was wondering, you really liked the way he handled himself during camp. I, I was curious how he handled himself um, when you had to tell him that he, he wasn't going to make the team and, and also just in the conversations you've had with him over the last week or two. Yeah. So Joey, Joey, Joey Bart believes in himself as, as, as a big uh, dating back to our our first spring training camp, he believed in himself as a big leader. So uh, what we asked of him was to continue to refine the area that is is no, one of the areas that's notable when it comes to being a major leader, which is game planning for opposing lineups. Some of the work that's going on now in Sacramento is Joey getting a head start on, on that. Uh, from a professionalism standpoint, you know, young players always think of themselves in the batter's box or on defense. And Joey has such a, a, an ability to lead people uh, based on his pedigree, based on his, his position. So he's taking the time right now to be what Buster, po like to work on what Buster Posey refined so well over so many years, which is taking on the responsibility of, of leading a pitching staff. You know, very directly. These are things that all young players have to work on. I don't want anybody to think that we're singling out Joey to be thinking about these things. Um, these are areas of development that every young catcher has to be focused on. And in this particular case, I think Joey's done a really nice job of, of, uh, of, of putting attention on, on these, these areas. 
Well, I know when he's ready, fans will be excited to see him. We certainly will, and you probably will be as well. So, uh, no doubt. Gabe, we really appreciate you joining us here on the show. We look forward to catching up with you throughout the season. Thanks, guys. Enjoyed the conversation, and uh, we'll see you soon.